I was bullied. Oh my god, I was bullied until if I tell you right now I don't even remember the names people called me. You can't believe it. And then there are people who just bully people because that's their work on the internet. That if I wake up in the morning, I have to check and give an opinion. And you know, one thing is that people who don't know you, who have never met you, who have never seen you, who are even hearing about you for the first time, have millions and millions of negative opinions about you. Last year I told I just sat down thought about all the compliments I get all the opportunities I've gotten because of what I do and I told myself I am doing much and that if you come to my space and tell me that I'm not doing enough I will block you because you know what you may not even handle what I've done in my um at my young age I've done a lot of things that even at your old age you're not even thinking about anything so I told myself I am doing much. I'm so proud of myself. I have a, outdone myself and I will continue to do it. My name is Anita Soina. I'm a 22 year old MP aspirant for Kajado North constituency. I am a Maasai heroine and a warrior who's risen uh, above online bullies and a warrior because I also fight to protect the environment and still fighting to protect communities against injustice. For me growing up has been a journey. I have grown up in different uh places. But my grandfather to me was um someone special. I can say he also at some point in my life was a father figure. After high school I joined politics. Yes, actively participating. I remember uh, I completed my exams in 2016 and 2017 we had elections. I mean, I was reading and, and that's something that really um makes me proud. It's because I start, I became interested when I was young. And that's where I met my mentor. Uh, he's called Eric Masanza. He's the founder of Spice Without Borders. He's one person who can really identify a sharp mind. and for him he just wants to mentor young people or uh, to young people to follow and discover their passion and that time he he really asked me a lot of questions like what what is pushing you like you so yeah you even don't have an id but you're just politicking online you know you you're giving opinions what what is the what like what's making you this what do you want to do i told him I just want to be that person who can change some things in the society. And that is when he told me, you want are you saying you want to be a positive social change catalyst? I was like, yes. So that's when I even heard of that sentence for the first time like positive social change catalyst. I said, yes. He told me, have you heard about the sustainable development goals? As a person who loved reading and all that, uh learning and knowing more information, I don't know how I did not know about SDGs at that point. So I read about the SDGs and here I am uh zero hunger not poverty quality education and now I came across SDG 13 and um climate action and now I'm starting to relate Wanga and Madai stories I, I I want to understand well and then these quotes by Wanga and Madai that we tend to put the environment last because we think we need to eradicate poverty first but what we are forgetting is we are eradicating poverty uh in an environment and not in vacuum so either way to me this was like um environment conservation really needs more attention because you can't tell people you're reducing poverty while climate change is worsening poverty levels so this needs attention so what do i need to do i read it was so wide and i was like you know i can't do everything but i can plant trees and that's how i discovered my my purpose while trying to follow what i had passion in i still discovered passion in conservation sometimes we want to see change we talk about change we talk about how this is not sitting right but now when it comes to how are you contributing to the change every most people keep quiet how are you trying to be that change that you want to see like mahatma said be the change you want to see in the world For me um I looked at the things I've been able to do with no resources no power too much pressure too many challenges and I still didn't give up in trying to help um different communities 
in my position as an environmental warrior, I'd tell you for real, um, every time when we have climate strikes worldwide, when we are addressing our needs, um, when we want people to hear us, when we want more better policies and the existing ones implemented, we never, I, I never cry to my fellow activist because she is, he or she exactly understands why I'm fighting. We always go to the leaders. It's always dear world leaders, dear leaders, dear this. And it's a conversation we usually have that, you know, if you are in that position as a leader, as someone who already um, feels the pain, has been in the shoes of these climate activists, understand what climate anxiety is, understand what greenwashing and too much PR with no action in conservation is, understanding how um, my country and other countries in Africa that are responsible for only 3% of the global emissions are now on the receiving end of the worst impacts of climate change. You now understand that you know now it's time for us to go for this position so that when we sit there, we exactly know what we want uh, to do. We exactly know which policy is going to be favorable. When I was starting co uh, con conservation, I just come to uh, a just joined campus, and my parents, my relatives, couldn't understand how I came to Nairobi and I'm attending a cleanup, sweeping, and all that. They couldn't see the need. But for me, it was um, they, they didn't tell me. Just do what took you to Nairobi. I mean, just get done with school and then you can do that later. For me, it's always getting started now. Because if I wait for a little bit longer, what about what I'd have done within that period of waiting? So for me, it's always trying to get started when I'm thinking about it. Because if I still dilly-dally and tell myself I have more time, remember the only moment that is promised is now. First of all, the first time I ever got an interview on TV, to me, was something big. I mean, you know, you've just been watching people on TV giving their ideas. Okay, when, when is my turn to talk to a larger crowd of people where they're not seeing me directly, but I'm trying to tell them what I'm fighting for and what I stand for. That was also a good moment, uh, a very good moment. But I'd say um, the fact that I've been able to mentor people and bring together a group. I have a team that to me is more of a family. I have a team that um, have sacrificed a lot. It's sad that since 2018, we've not even been able to pay anybody salaries or just, you know, within the organization because it's been purely volunteering. It's them that go to their pockets to get that 100 shillings, that 200 shillings, 300, to make sure that we purchase seedlings and we go and plant them in different parts of the country and all that. Putting up that team, is something that I'm so proud of. Sometimes, almost every other weekend, I host them. We come together uh, at home. They even like they even ask, when are we going home? Like It really makes me feel good. These are people I, I didn't know before. And there are people who have never stepped into an environmental-related class. But through my online pages, through me fighting and, and uh, uh, through activism, through education online. They send me maybe an inbox on Facebook, Instagram, and just said, I want to be part of your team. And that's what we have right now. That uh, makes me proud. When you, when you lift other people and teach other people, that's where the impact is. Not when you compete with someone and you think you emerge the best. And I think that has also um, come a lot with my blessings. I normally like to... Uh, to to bring other people, to help other people as well, so that their voices can be heard. I have so many moments, but the um, reason to one is that I attended the COP26 uh, conference, which was in Glasgow, the UN uh, Climate Change Conference, uh, in November last year, and it was nice. For sure, I went there as a Maasai, dressed in the Maasai beads, and had the shuka in some of the meetings. And speaking about how uh, people from my country, my community, are facing climate change effects, and having that interview with BBC, oh my God, I was so excited <laughs> uh, for the first time doing interview with BBC News. And m meeting a whole new family of, uh, we don't have time, they're the ones who funded me, got me out from Kenya all the way. They are paid for everything, from my flight ticket to even COVID, uh, COVID, uh, the COVID test, 
they paid everything every single cent for me i even had more money to shop for winter clothes i mean that that was just a moment of um I'm, I'm 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 making a new family um they're swedish based and all that just because they believed they checked my work online and they believed in me and meeting the u.s senators i got a chance to meet two u.s senators that senator uh jeff markley and ed markey who were really keen in listening to us and i was so happy in that meeting we were activists and i was one of the activists uh we were four activists i was representing kenya and africa in the meeting they were able to just sit down and listen to us these are senators who are known um to be on the forefront in conservation sitting down with them just because they are the ones who are asking for a meeting with you i mean it was just one proud moment i even i made portraits out of the photos there in my house that every day i wake up and look and say oh my god that's me and makes me proud every other time yeah the only qualification you need for it to conserve the environment and fight for the planet is the fact that you live in it and of course anita soina 2020 <laughs> anyway so um it's basically just trying to tell people that um you know you could be thinking um you have challenges and maybe you could be you could be thinking that um it's not something affecting you long time we used to hear people say uh, climate change is a 2030 issue 2030 is here and i like to to remind people that it's not only for the for people who, le- who say we are doing it for the next generation it's not for the next generation per se it's from our generation and then the next generation so it's all of these generations because i mean by 2030 or uh, i'll be 30 so uh, god willing i'll be 30 that will mean i'll still be a youth i will still be young and i will still be affected that is when uh, scientists are uh, one that will have the some of the worst climate change effects being irreversible conservation is not is not like uh, you need to go out and plant a million trees you need to go out and 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 collect all the trash in the neighborhood that's not what it is it is uh, just us coming up with small ways the, what we can handle what can you do in your capacity it could be you have a voice you could use your platforms to speak about it uh for my case conservation remains passion whether i join anything else conservation has to be number one for me it's always has to be in front because like i said the environment is everything there's a time someone told me i wasn't doing enough in conservation i really felt like so broken because conservation is very wide it's like division of labor that you are taught in business pick what you're good at and then you do that someone else does that and then together we we can change the world small uh, in our own small ways and so someone tells me i'm not doing enough and the person is doing nothing at all i go and try to check his page nothing like nothing nothing to show advocacy nothing that i can even say they have ever tried and i'm doing this nobody's paying me i'm not on salary at all I am going to my pocket. I'm going out to convince people who are having challenges on their end to contribute at least even 10 shillings so we can buy seedlings and take them to a school somewhere and plant fruit seedlings so that these children or um, other children who come later can eat the fruits from there so that other people can sit under the shade and someone say I'm not doing enough. So people are so unkind in the space even in conservation but I'll advise everybody that If you see anybody who's trying to fight for any uh, any change in the society just try and be positive even if you're you're just even if you're faking even if you're just trying to pretend that you wish me well or you're just congratulating me that will that will help the person like good work you're doing well you know as much as i use uh, online spaces for my own benefit for the benefit of the uh, society it's not a walk in the park every day you wake up and you realize uh you see one follower and you're like either one more bully <laughs> or one more supporter or just one more positive person maybe just to take back to how i even grew my social media pages uh people didn't know me before but for those who know me that when i joined our uh, campus as much as i was doing conservation and studying at the same time i was hustling i <coughs> 
I was doing uh, PR stuff for um, and managing social media accounts and social media pages for artists in the gospel industry. Kevin Bahati was my first boss. He taught me, he used to tell me, uh, this is not how you should post. Sometimes I could see like, ananipigia kelele, see must by the way, you know, see must by the way. But it's something that really shaped me. That time uh, I used to accompany some artists for interviews and I grew from there. Online has two types of, three types of people. People who go to comment and bully people to seek attention. There are people who are positive. Despite everything, they'll try and make you see the good in yourself. And then there are people who just bully people because that's their work on the internet. That if I wake up in the morning, I have to check and give an opinion. And you know, one thing is that people who don't know you who have never met you, who have never seen you, who are even hearing about you for the first time, have millions and millions of negative opinions about you. And that will tell everyone outside there how to handle these issues. Just sit back and think. Of course, apart from maybe your close people who could be sharing information, it's now back to people who give opinions. You'd go to some comment section and someone is giving an opinion about you. They don't, they have not met you, they have not heard about you, but they just have something to say about you. I don't want to say like my case was special, but checking on the comments, it's, I'd say I've seen people have worse things said about them. But for me, I've just seen people trying to um, express their bitterness sometimes and just sort of trying to ride on whatever is going on. You just want to give an opinion because it's there. So all this, I'd say, was in 2019. I was just a 19-year-old. <laughs> and I'd say it was love gone wrong, you know. And, you know, when, when you... Maybe you could just be known by a few people and then you are involved with someone who's in the public space and public eye, then automatically you're, you're inviting you're inviting the public space to your life. I was bullied. Oh my God, I was bullied until, if I tell you right now, I don't even remember the names people called me. You can't believe it. Because um, I woke up in the morning one day and I mentioned on an Instagram story and just trying to be that bad girl. I, you know that feature where you mention someone and they repost? I used to just repost. Because wh where do I start from? Mentioned in a story. So you know what was mentioned? I repost, repost. And I, I just chill. You know, I, I never thought that at such a young age I'd be worrying about my security for what? You know, 19, you know, it's, it, it wasn't that, <laughs> it wasn't that, it wasn't making sense to me. Yeah, but I really thank God. Um, it also shaped me, the fact that um, eventually I'd get to leadership and all that. And I have seen people get dragged in even things they do not know about. So at least for me, it came early. I already know that these things are there. I already know the online society. I already know how the people are operating. So that way, um, I grew a thick skin. And I really thank um, Edgar at this point. There are people who don't like him and all that, but that's for now. Like I would really say I thank him because he let me know something I'd never know. That if you don't share your story, someone else will share it and you'll have no control over over the lies that will come up or anything that happens or any misinformation or something so you know this is online space whether you talk you keep quiet their opinions so there's there's more harm in silence it's me and the person who did the interview that understand why it was so necessary not because i i, I wanted to clout or something that's not something to be proud of gaining followers from it and from my side as much as there are sometimes and i think mm, even I, I sometimes i don't agree with edgar in some of the some of the posts but that's okay you know like i have my opinion you have your opinion that's life i had friends who really stood with me i had people who went and it's okay i mean you can't force people to stay and maybe they, they they're not happy with it you know sometimes i just try to understand and that makes me a happy person always but um, 
it wasn't uh, easy. You'd go somewhere and you'd say your name and oh ni wewe. Now at this point, oh ni wewe is not because you're a conservationist. Oh ni wewe is not because of what. And like I don't also like to blame blogs and all that. Because I, I'll tell you for a fact, even ever since that story, till date, I have blogs that I look, I have um, pages that I know. They post me every other time and they talk about me as an environmentalist. Then we have this blog. At some point I was forced to, uh, my lawyer ever wrote a, uh, a letter to one of the blogs. Because I'll come as they were even adding things that were, were not there. And pages like Nairobi Gossip Club. That person is very anonymous. I don't know him. We've never met him. I've never paid him. I've never done yet. I don't know him. But whenever I do something, when I was nominated for the award in the UK, sometimes back in 2020, you wake up and you see 21 year old environmentalist, 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 Kenyan climate change activist, this and this. And that way you're able to judge. Like he had an option of calling you somebody's ex, but he didn't do that because, um, because of maybe his own reasons. And that to me is very big support. And then now we have this blog. This ex, okay, there's a time I got stuck in Dar es Salaam. <laughs> and um, I usually go to Dar es Salaam to unwind, especially every December. Because people don't understand, as much as we are happy, we have thick skin and all that, when it comes to work, climate anxiety, too much pressure from what we do in our own lives, I always love to relax far away from family, far away from what, and I just go to Dar es Salaam and stay with some of my friends there. So when I was coming back, I confused 3 a.m. for 3 p.m. <laughs> I didn't see it was a.m., so I showed up at the airport 12 hours later. <laughs> And there was no one. So I, you know the way we share. We love to share. Once you're in the public space, I don't know what, what that is. Like it pushes you to post almost every single detail. So that time I was posting how, um, uh, how the flight uh, left and all that. And this blog picks up. It's a good blog with a good, uh, it's called SEO. That one? Yeah. And they just go and write, um, Anita Soina nini nini by her flight. This is uh, this ex and I'm like, yo, can't I just be me? Like do you have to do but I understand, you know, clickbait, so maybe they feel like you won't be interested to I don't know, to open if they don't put that as their title. And I think that's where we are failing. But anyway, what what do I know about about blogging and all that, yeah. And then also at some point, um, I've had supportive partners. Not that in your end, after Apple. <laughs> I, but there's an S at the end, oh, too. And um, really looked at it differently. Didn't take it that way. Like, didn't take it. Um, even my ex, now he's um, someone I dated after the story, was so supportive and People, I remember, you know, we, uh, I used to stay at his workplace and help him with work. I had the phones because it was at the reception. And I remember at some point I could open, I want to respond to clients and all that. And someone sent some message, links, like, I'm talking about to my links, episode one, episode two, and I'm to me as what And he'd just tell them I know. That to me was um, like a shock, first of all. But one thing about me is I always make sure I let someone know. And maybe just to say something, uh, that relationship was one that brought that stress out of me, by the way. We ended it because our dreams were not matching. I wanted to be a conservationist forever, but for him, he felt like he used to feel frustrated on my behalf. So I wake up in the morning, I'm going to, I don't have traveled to Nakuru to go and plant trees. I come back home, I've not been paid. And every day he used to ask, you're not being paid to do this. Why are you being paid to do this? And it got to a point, Ali Choka, Adia Kasema, just stay at home if it's cool and all that, but stop this. He actually said, stop this conservation things. Like, watch. I was like, you know what? I love you so much. We have had many differences that we have overcome. But, Inayo, Siachi. 
and that's like i was just like you know you you're going to hurt you'll hurt both of you will move on and both of you will be feeling bad about it but you know we have to do it and now my current partner who knows about it he actually <laughs> he knew about it through the people of the internet team dm ah uko sure ujaonanga hii kwani kwani wewe hujui hii kwani but appreciate so much today i had an interview i woke up in the morning i found that um he was ironing my suit and took me for the interview waited he doesn't even understand the language waited and still dropped me for this i mean it's just someone that supports you despite all the challenges and that's to tell you that this is your partner this is someone who has chosen to be with you i mean online space is not funny and it's something i realized we may not change it tomorrow so it's something that we have to live with it for some time you know a sad situation makes you or breaks you and both is also possible but it's for you to decide sometimes it could be very hard um you look at it and say okay so this has happened my life is done that's let's say that's person a and person b will say this has happened let me relax and come back better because the life has to continue so it's actually you just looking at how you want to handle the uh, some of the situations now this is to address maybe the cases of um confrontations and bullying before i even talk to maybe anyone else outside there is that look at it positively it's not easy i can't lie to you that it's that easy it's not easy you will get people who will talk about your mistakes and your frustrations even 10 years later but it's up to you to really look beyond that and it's very possible because um you know the, the the decision about my life it's generally it's just upon me like uh for example just as you can't come and decide for me that you know now this happened to you you have to sit i have the um the will to say no this happened to me i am resting but i'll be back or because sometimes it's also important to rest people go through a lot and they just want to continue pushing and pushing until they can push no more is when they realize they are now in the worst worst situation you know for the people who love trolling people online i'm not saying you shouldn't give opinions because that has to be there feel free to always give opinions about someone even in those uh, blog pages if someone uh, did whatever they did you can give your opinions but bullying i mean like I, i was telling people this new year you wake up in the morning and all you think to do is abuse someone you do not know and i wasn't even speaking for myself speaking for even that person who is not known even people who are not famous get bullied just think about it like just reflect jitem kutano kando ask yourself is this what i've decided to do Now this is my purpose in life to wake up and throw in insults that you never see good in people to wake up and always try and find negative uh, things in people and all that you know and if that's what you really want to do then honey you can keep doing it and if you feel like uh, what i've said um makes you feel like in your way it's not necessary then you could be one of the positive people that people are looking for outside there but you just overshadowed by the world overshadowed by the world of online where you think that you just have to talk anything you know people don't know how much they lose jobs because of their comments online people go and comment on pages and then they expect you to help them tomorrow most people and i can say celebrities and people who have numbers online can tell you this that sometimes someone abuses you you open the dm you're reading maybe you'd never talk to the person amekuangalia amekuandikia paragraph ya shida zake vile anaomba tuke which is not bad we also lack even me there's a time i lack that 1000 shilling it's okay but you've come to me to ask for help and the next thing in the comment section is you're commenting negatively I saw Jamal uh Jamal uh, Rosafi say it the other day and I concur with him that if I block you it there is a reason and if 
someone leaves a negative comment, for example, on my page, and you come and like it, for me, you're in the same group. I just take you like you're just part of it. I have blocked people that were even my friends, even my roommates in campus. Even those reactions on Facebook where people laugh at comments and all that, I usually block. Like I block, I delete you because my personal space is important. I just can't do that for my constituents because we have to sit down and, under, and understand like, you know, where the issue is. But for people I know like friends and they try to do that, I don't give them space. Have you never seen Kibe has beef with everybody? He, he said, I'm running for parliament because it's sexually transmitted ambition. I don't know how he called it, but he said something of the sort and said that I had an affair with the Babu Namamba. I didn't expect someone to even go and point out names and like come here like you and you. It's a cost one item, which is a lie. I mean, if someone just said, this one is doing this because she thinks your leadership is sexually transmitted or something. But going to just pick people who've supported me in my journey, who've seen me grown, who've supported not only me, but people around him. Everybody around him can say that. I'm not coming to the office with my body parts. I'm coming to the office as me and with my brains and with what I can offer. But because you just want to be a bitter person and want relevance and want to show the world that I can speak this about someone, Forgetting that the internet never forgets. You could talk about someone, you could talk, even give opinion about Karen Nyamu just because she's a lady and she's fine, that a lady cannot tell me anything. So are you, are you just going against black women or which women are you exactly against? Because there's someone who you'll see hanging around ladies and they're still, you know, and comes back to his show and say women are nothing, that women should not lead, that women should do this and all that. I'm not a gender biased person. I am not like a... Um, person who likes to pull the gender card of women. I fight for the rights of men. I talk for men online. I encourage people to show love to men. I encourage people to listen to men and all that. The same way I encourage someone to listen to women. But what he's clearly saying is that a woman can't lead. A woman can't do this. A woman can't tell you anything. That if people love each other, that look at that woman you used to sing what's wrong with my wife or my husband or whatever so it's up to him to think about it he can continue doing this to us he can continue doing this to every other person but he needs to sit down and have a meeting with himself and think about it how many lives he's damaging and how this can be him tomorrow and maybe his cases are worse Tom to US single if you have the worst cases that can make you get to a very bad place, doesn't matter where you are. Justice is always served. Doesn't matter where you sit at. And that's what I'll always say. The difference between him and other bloggers, he's doing it for 100 more badges. Last year, I, told, I just sat down, thought about all the compliments I get, all the opportunities I've gotten because of what I do, and I told myself I am doing much, and that if you come to my space and tell me that I'm not doing enough, I will block you because you know what? You may not even handle what I've done in my, um, at my young age. I've done a lot of things that even at your old age, you're not even thinking about anything. So I told myself, I am doing much. I'm so proud of myself. I have outdone myself, and I will continue to do it irrespective of everything and our conservation activities will go on and people can keep joining from different parts of the country different parts of the world um, um our social media platforms are always open that is our spies warriors kenya on all social media platforms always open and that way you always taken through a step to, to be a member. Like I said, we don't have at its due or papers or something. And my dream is one day we'll be able to offer opportunities. I get messages, people asking me about internship and attachments. I feel so bad that we've not grown enough to get there. But again, this time for everything, it's a process, it's a journey, not a destination. We will get there and, very, and I'm sure we will also be offering opportunities and creating employment as well because out here there are green jobs that people earn a lot from them. So Ina is just 22, 
but Soina is not too young to run and she's not too young to lead. Um, I'll be vying um, for the position of an, a member of parliament, that is uh, Kajado North constituency. I want to change this narrative of, I will come and do for you this, I will come and do for you this, I'll come and do for you this. As much as I have things that I think about in my mind, that I know the environment has to be clean and safe for everybody, that I know that uh, security is a, is a concern in my constituency. We don't even have street lights. People can't run their businesses still late like other areas. Water scarcity is an issue, you know. Um, as much as I think about them, I also want the people, and that's why I welcome people even uh, from this constituency who will be watching this video to make good use of the uh, comment section. It's me coming to you to understand what exactly your problem is. Do you want a leader who will come and um, listen to you or do you want someone who will give you 100 shillings and disappear and come back and give you 100 shillings and disappear, come back for governor and even get to even the top, you know? So those are some of the things that I look at and I really am hoping. I'm hopeful because I've seen um, other young people uh, do this. I'm hopeful because as much as we have the young people who are elected, go to parliament or whichever seat, neglected their own people. I'm hopeful that we have seen other people who've tried and be um, and continued building the relationship with the people that even after they got elected, they still stayed with the people and still delivered what they could with the resources that were availed. So I appeal to all the people, uh, the voters and the residents of Kajadu North to come out in large numbers. And whenever you see my name anywhere, make sure you take my name. Uh, if inshallah we get to we get to august then i'm also appealing for your vote uh, for me i want to come down and listen to what you really need i don't want to come and promise you something that you may not be needing